If you're looking for a sewing tutorial for a cute little crossbody bag, this is the video for you. This is the sewing tutorial for the Meridius crossbody bag by Country Cow Designs. This cute little crossbody has a grab handle as well as a main crossbody strap. Um, it's got a kind of unique flap construction because it looks like a double flap on the back. So this is actually sewn down but it, then it has a zip pocket in the back. Um, we wanted to make a semicircle bag for a while, but we're just we're trying to come up with something that made it a little bit more unique. Um, Adam came up with this grab handle idea, and then we decided to double up the flap. So we thought that gives it quite a unique look. And then on the inside of this bag, it's a quick, simple bag to make. It's just got a larger zip pocket here, and that is it. So it's pretty quick to make. We have rated it as an intermediate pattern, purely because of the curves. So if you've not sewn, sewn curves before, then this will be a little bit of a challenge for you, but definitely doable. And in this video tutorial, I'll go through every step with you. So we generally recommend a multi-directional print for this flap. However, in the pattern, there's quick instructions if you do want to make one with a directional print like this. This little guy, this is a Tula Pink fabric design. Um, what I did for this one was I just joined it at the top and then I put a leather accent on to hide the seam where it joins. So I made this one using real leather um, on the Janome HD9, but on a domestic machine, I would stick to things like cotton, canvas, um, lightweight faux leather, that kind of thing. Cork should work great on a domestic sewing machine. For this pattern, we are using fusible foam to give the bag a nice bit of body. You could use Decaville Light if you're using a thicker fabric or if you just want a slightly more slouchy finish to your bag. And then if you want to go for a really challenging sew or if you've got an industrial machine like Adam, you may want to make one like this. This is his full-on leather and canvas version. So you can just watch the video tutorial or you can sew along with me by grabbing the sewing pattern from our website, countrycowdesigns.com. And on the website, you'll also find um, hardware kits, zips, that kind of thing for making your bags. If you want some more inspiration for your bag, check out all the tester photos. They did an amazing job as always. And on the blog post for this pattern, which I'll link in the video, there is loads and loads of photos, all of the photos by the testers, lots of different style bags, lots of different materials. It will give you inspiration for what to do with yours. Throughout this video, I'll be using various tools and techniques. I will link everything that you might need in the video description. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask, and please, while you're here, subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out, and it will let you know then when we have future video tutorials coming out. So before we begin, I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody who bought our last pattern, the Desk Sew Organizer bag. It's a massive help to us and we really appreciate it, me and Adam, as a small business, having everyone's support. So here's a quick look at the size of this bag on and I'll do the classic iPhone size comparison so you can kind of see what size that is. There we go. Uh, that should hopefully give you an idea of the size of this bag, but again, the measurements are all on the pattern listing, so check that out on the website. And now, without further ado, we'll get sewing. Step one of the pattern is preparation. So we won't cover this in detail, but I strongly recommend that you read the instructions in the pattern. As with anything in life, preparation is key to success. It will make your life easier. So you can see I'm using this water-resistant water cotton canvas for part of my exterior. And then I'm going to combine it with a cork for my main exterior. So this is my feature fabric. This is my main exterior fabric. I have interfaced this with a lightweight woven interfacing just to give it a little bit more weight. Then for my lining, I'm just using a quilting cotton weight fabric, and that is interfaced with medium weight woven interfacing. I've fused the flap stabilizer to the lining piece. Make sure you've fuse it to the lining because we're going to fit the zip pocket on the exterior. And then for the other stabilizers, I have gone ahead and fitted those to my exterior fabric. I don't have fusible foam handy right now, so I've used standard foam and I have stuck it in place with a bit of Fabri-Tac. If you're going to do this, check first of all on an off cut, just see whether your fabric can handle the glue because sometimes it will leak through and show. If that is the case, you could use a bit of double-sided tape just to hold it in place because when we assemble the bag, then 
the stabiliser will stay in place. One thing to note is that the flap needs to be a multi-directional fabric because you're going to have it hanging over the bag with the front and the back. If you have a one direction fabric, then either the front or the back will be upside down. So I strongly recommend a multi-directional fabric for the flap. If there's a one directional fabric that you really, really want to use, check out the preparation section in the pattern. It will give you instructions on how to create a flap with a seam in the center. Now, before we start, you're going to make your life a lot easier if you mark the centers on everything. So I've gone ahead and done that. And on the flap, what I did, I just folded it in half and snipped a tiny triangle out. And that way I've got a nice little center mark that's going to be within the seam allowance, but it's going to show on both sides of the fabric. I've also got my zips and hardware ready to go. We are using three quarter inch rectangle rings and strap sliders to go with the O-rings. If you don't have these, one of the testers did use one inch hardware to go with the O-rings and it does still look pretty good. Personally, I prefer the look of the three quarter inch hardware on this, but um, that is personal choice. So let's get started. Step two is straps. For this step, you're gonna need your main strap, your grab handle, your exterior base piece, your strap base, two O-rings and some rivets. So we'll start with the strap base. What we're gonna do is mark the center all the way along on the wrong side of the fabric. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold these long edges into the center line and press. So I'm gonna press mine with an iron. If you're using something like vinyl or faux leather, you may prefer to use double-sided tape to hold this in place. So I'm gonna fold both edges into the center line so that they meet. Now that's pressed, I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine. I'm gonna sew each of the long edges with a quarter inch seam allowance. For the straps, I'm using a 4.5 stitch length. Whatever stitch length you choose to use for this strap base, make sure that you're consistent with all of the straps that we're making for this bag. Once that's top stitched, flip it over and in the pattern it'll give you the measurements for where you want to mark this strap on the wrong side of the fabric. So this is where this raw edge is. So I've marked it in from each end. Then I'm going to slip an O-ring on and I'm going to use some double-sided tape because what I want to do is I want to fold this back to the mark and hold it in place. You can add a couple of clips too just to secure that in place. And we're going to do the exact same thing on the other end. Now we need to flip this over so that we're looking at the right side. Make sure that you're using an erasable fabric pen for this step. What we're going to do is we're going to mark an inch down from the fold on the O-ring and just mark a line lightly there. Do the same thing on both ends. Now we're going to grab the exterior gusset and we're also gonna mark this with an erasable fabric pen. So we wanna mark it two inches down and centered, and you're gonna mark a three quarter inch line. Do this on both ends of the exterior gusset. Now we need to attach these two together. So we're gonna flip this over. Again, this is the wrong side of this strap base that we're using. I'm gonna put some double-sided tape right down the center. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna place this and it should land right between these two marks here. And you wanna make sure that it's perfectly centered on the gusset so you can check it from both sides. Check that it's centered and equal on both sides and then stick it down. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew this on with an eighth of an inch seam allowance and we're gonna sew across the one inch marks at the top. So you're sewing a big rectangle. Okay, so you might have noticed that I um, went a little bit too far on one of my ends, 
the one inch mark really wasn't showing up well on this fabric. I'm not really worried about that. It's just, it's not gonna be noticeable and we're gonna fit the rivets here anyway. But if you do get a little bit close, using a hump jumper is a great idea. So I'm gonna fit my rivets now. If you have a rivet template like this, these are just fantastic for helping you get a good placement. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna center it over there. This is about half inch down from the O-ring. That's a good place to have one. And then I'm gonna fit the second one a little bit further down. So it's really up to you where you position these, but I like to have one of them as close as I can get to the O-ring, just to really reinforce it and hold it in place. Once the rivet placements are marked, I'm gonna use my hole punch to punch a hole for each one. And now I'm just gonna set these with my rivet press. If you don't have one of these, you can set these by hand using hand tools that you can get from Amazon and places like that. But you'll generally find this is the easiest and best way to do rivets. Now we'll set that aside for a moment and we're gonna work on the main strap and the grab handle. So for both of these, we're gonna do the same thing as we did on the strap base. So I've drawn a line down the center. I'm just gonna fold the long edges into that center line and give that a good press. I'm gonna do that for my main strap and my grab handle. Once you've got those folded, you have the option, if you want to, to add a little bit of stabilizer. So I'm gonna add some to my grab handle because I just want it to be a little bit more reinforced. If you're using a lightweight cotton, then this is a great idea. This is just half an inch wide by 24 inches long. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slip it in between one of these layers. I'm gonna make sure it's centered lengthwise because it is a bit shorter. We don't really need it in the ends. So I'm gonna make sure it's centered, push it right up against the fold and fuse it in place. We're now going to fold this again on the center line and clip these long edges together. So we do have raw edges on the ends, that's correct, because we're gonna be using strap ends for this. Now I'm going to sew this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance and a quarter of an inch seam allowance on each long edge. That way it's gonna match my original strap base and I'm gonna make sure that the main strap matches too. So while I'm over at the sewing machine, I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the main strap, fold it over and clip it. And then I'm gonna sew both of these at the same time. Now those are sewn, we are going to make our rivet holes. So on the grab handle, you're gonna have eight measurements in the pattern from each side. So eight holes from each side. On the main strap, you're gonna have four holes on each side. So I've gone ahead and marked mine already. And then I'm just gonna punch the holes with my rivet punch. Now the rivet holes are done, we want to fit the strap ends to the grab handle. So depending on the size of your strap ends and the thickness of your strap, we've allowed like a little bit of excess. So what you can do is fold it over by a quarter of an inch and then pop it in. If your strap end doesn't fit that way, just trim a quarter of an inch off and then put it straight in and fit it like that. So we're gonna fit a strap end to each end. Most of these are just screwed in, um, but I do like to add a bit of Fabri-Tac glue in there just to be sure as well. Before screwing these in, just make sure that the screws are showing on the same side, so they're both on the wrong side of your strap if you have a preference, but whichever way you do it, you need to make sure that the underside of your strap ends is on the same side on both ends. Personally, I prefer to make a little, awl, a little hole with an awl before fitting my screws. I just find it makes the screws go in slightly easier. You can repeat this process with your main strap ends now if you want to, but if you're gonna do that, make sure that your strap will still fit through your slider once the strap ends are fitted. 
For example, with mine, I will struggle quite a lot to get these through, although they do go. So um, it's totally up to you whether you want to fit the strap ends to your main strap now or wait and do it later once we've got the strap slider fitted. So the last thing we're going to do in this step is we're going to put one of the ends of the grab handle through a rectangle ring. And you're going to fold it back on yourself so the underside of the strap end is hidden. And then go ahead and line up your rivet holes. So you're going to have two rivet holes to line up. I'm just going to set those with the press and then we'll move on to the next step. Step three is the flat pocket. For this step, you're going to need your seven inch zip, your flap pocket facing, your two flap pocket pieces, your lining flap and your feature flap. And your lining flap should already have the stabilizer fused to the back of it. So the first thing you're going to do is grab your pocket facing piece. And you're going to draw this rectangle in the middle. Now you can see I, I got mine wrong first time. Um, I didn't measure it correctly, but Basically this box is three quarters of an inch in from each side and you should end up with a box that's half an inch tall. To fit this zip pocket facing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the centre on the top edge. So I'm just going to snip it to mark the centre. And on the pattern you've got a measurement to mark from the centre of the flap down. So what we're doing here, we're going to have the front of the bag and the back of the bag. Right now we're working on the back. So you're going to measure from the centre toward the back, one and three quarter inches. Now I've already marked mine and I've marked the centre too. And I'm going to place this right sides together, matching up the centre mark. And it's on the line there. And I'll just pin that in place. Now I'm going to sew this rectangle and when I reach the corners, I'm going to use a shorter stitch length so that I get a neater finish on the corners. Now I'm going to cut down this center line and then I'm going to cut the small triangles going into the corners as close as I can get, but without cutting the stitching. Now what I'm going to do is give this a good press on all four sides. So I'm just going to use a seam roller for mine, but you can press this with the iron. This will help give it a nice crisp finish. Then I'm going to pull it through to the back. And we want to get this to lay completely flat. So I am going to take this over to the iron now and give it a press. But if you're using a fabric that can't handle heat, then you could use the seam roller or you could use double sided tape or something like that to hold this facing down. Once that's pressed and looking nice and neat on both sides, you can just set that aside for a moment. Grab your two pocket pieces for the flap and you're going to want your zip as well. I'm going to add my zip afterwards so it's slightly easier to sew. So with one of my pocket pieces right side up, I'm going to place the zip right side up on this top edge and clip those together. Now I'm going to sew this with a scant quarter inch seam allowance. A scant is slightly less than. Grab your second pocket piece and place that right side up. Grab the other side of your zip and place it right side up on top. Make sure that your pocket pieces are lined up down these edges. And clip those together. So your pocket pieces are now right sides together. We're going to sew that edge with a scant quarter inch seam allowance. Now I'm going to take this over to the iron and I'm going to press it so that the zip is fl sitting flat. That will make it easier to fit. If you're using a metal zip, be very careful as it will get very hot. And as always, if this is your first time heating a zip, check it on an off cut first, just to make sure in case if you have a really strange zip that melts or something like that. So now I'm going to go ahead and fit the zip pull to my pocket. And I'm going to put a little bit of double sided tape 
on each side of my zip so that it can stay in place when I fit it in just a moment. So you can use double-sided tape or you could use fabric glue. And to start with, I'm just gonna remove the top piece. Now my zip is closing to the left because zips, the standard is for them to close to the left. I'm gonna place this over and make sure that my pocket facing is lined up with the edge of the pocket. So we want the zip to be inside the box. Okay. Once you're happy that's nice and straight, you can remove the double-sided tape from the bottom of the zip. And just fix that all in place. Now what we're going to do is we're going to sew a box around here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. While you're sewing this, make sure that both your pocket pieces are completely open. So the top piece is pointing upward and the bottom piece is pointing downward. Okay, so now we're going to flip this over and we're going to pull the top piece down so you'll see that it's shorter than the other one. And we're just gonna clip them together at the top. Now what we want is we want them to match, but we also want them to follow the corner. So we're just gonna trim them to match. So you just wanna make sure they're not gonna be caught in your seam allowance, that's all. Now I'm gonna sew this pocket all the way around, but as I do that, I'm gonna do it with this side up and I'm just gonna pull the main panel away so I can easily access the pocket. You do not wanna be sewing through the main panel of the flap when you're doing this. Step four is the flap and back panel. So for this step, you're gonna need that feature flap that you've just been working on, your lining flap piece, your magnetic snap and one of your main panels, so this is gonna be the back panel. So during this step, I'm gonna to refer to the front and the back of the flap. What I mean by that is the part that's gonna go on the back of the bag that has the pocket, and the part that's gonna be on the front of the bag. If you're not sure which is which, or you have a preference, particularly for the lining, what you might wanna do is just mark it now. Front and back and front and back. This way we can make sure that we don't get things wrong because we wanna make sure that the magnetic snap is on the right place for the lining compared to where the exterior pocket is. So the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna fit the male part of your magnetic snap. We're fitting this one and a half inch up and we're gonna center it and this is gonna be on the front portion of the flap. Once you've found the location there, so that's one and a half inch up and centered, you're just gonna place your washer over it and mark the side slits. Then we're gonna cut these side slits with a small pair of scissors. Or a very sharp pair of scissors. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of fray check on these slits just to make sure that that's future proof. And then I'm gonna push the male part of the magnetic snap, so the bit with the pointy out bit, through there. And I like a bit of extra stabilizer, even though we've got the Decaville, I like a bit more behind my magnetic snap. So I'm gonna mark on this piece of Peltex too. So you could use any old stabilizer that you've got lying around. And then I'm gonna pop that over my prongs, put the washer on top and push those prongs down. So flip your lining part of the flap over. On the back part of this, we are gonna measure and mark a box. So you've got the measurements there in your pattern, so go ahead and mark that on the lining. Now this box doesn't have to be 100% accurate. It can be smaller if you want to, just don't make it any bigger. So what we're gonna do, now I've marked my box, I'm gonna sew this rectangle with any old stitch length, just um, make sure that you back stitch at the beginning and end. 
Now that's sewn, I'm gonna chop an X here. So I'm going from one side to the other. Again, this, this doesn't need to be neat. This is just gonna be our turning hole. So grab your feature flap and you wanna get the pocket and you wanna put it right sides together with the box that you just cut. Okay, so your fronts should be matching and your backs should be matching. And make sure that the box you've cut is on the same side as the zip pocket. So we're gonna place these right sides together match up your centre marks and clip them both together. Now that's clipped, I'm going to sew it lining side up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a zip foot onto my machine and I'm going to get the presser foot right up against this stabiliser here and use it as a guide all the way around so that my stitching is right on the edge of the stabiliser. This will give the flap a really neat finish. To get an extra neat finish on this flap, I'm going to use pinking shears on these curves and this will help the fabric sit neatly when we've turned it right side out. If you don't have pinking shears, you can just use a small pair of scissors to cut little triangles, which will give a similar result. So we're just reducing the bulk so then it will sit nice and neat on these curves. Now you can turn the flap right side out through the big X that you left in the lining. If you have one of these little turning tools, this can be really handy just for poking out the edges. So what I'm going to do is just use it to sort of push the seam out. But you could just use a chopstick or something to do a similar thing. Just want to get these seams sitting nice and neat all the way around the flap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to the iron and give it a really good press, make sure that all of these curves are sitting nice and neat. Then I'm gonna top stitch the entire flap with a generous eighth of an inch seam allowance. So that's slightly more than an eighth of an inch. Now our flap is finished, we want to mark the centers again. So I'm just gonna fold it in half because that's generally the easiest way to do this. And since my lining fabric is lighter, I'm gonna mark that. Now I'm using an erasable fabric pen, so make sure that you do the same. And next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark a line quarter of an inch up from this zip opening. So from here, quarter of an inch up. Grab your exterior back panel and you want to place your flap on here. We want a one and a half inch gap at the bottom and make sure that your flap is centered everywhere else. Now what you can do to make this a little bit easier to sew is use some double sided tape to hold the two pieces together. Make sure that that is completely centered, especially up here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sew with a scant eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way around the bottom edge of the flap and then across that line that you drew just above the zip. So that's your flap and back panel done. Now you can move on to the next step. Step five is exterior construction. For this step, you're going to need your exterior gusset, your remaining main panel, and the one that you've already done with the flap. So the first thing that we're gonna do is fit the female magnetic snap to your remaining panels. This is the front panel. And in the pattern, it gives you a measurement here. It's two and five eighths of an inch up and centered. So I've already marked that. Next, I'm going to place my washer over that mark and mark the side slits. I'm gonna use my seam ripper to cut this cork. If you're using a seam ripper here, be very careful because you don't want it to slip. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the female magnetic snap through those slits and I'm going to place the washer on the back and fold the prongs down flat. 
Now the centers should already be marked on the main panel and the gusset. So what we're going to do, we're going to clip the top edges of the gusset first. So you're going to clip them, match them up with the top edge here. And they're going to be right sides together. And then we're going to match the center mark on the gusset to the center mark on the main panel and clip those together. Now the gusset is going to look a little bit too small. That is the way it should be when we're sewing like this because we're sewing with a seam allowance. So the circumference is smaller where the seam allowance is. So what we need to do is we need to get this gusset to fit. And to do that, we're going to snip into it just a little bit, less than a quarter of an inch, because you don't want it to go further than your seam allowance. And these snips are about an inch apart or thereabouts. Then what we're going to do is ease it around so that where it's snipped, it will sort of spread and it will fit better onto the curve. Now I'm going to sew this gusset on using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Be careful as you sew past the O-rings, you may want to fold them out of the way just to make things a little bit easier. So I also sewed a second row of stitching within the seam allowance just a little bit behind the first, but I didn't start and stop at the top. I started about an inch or so below. Um, that's to make sure that I can still press my seam open at the top. But this second row of stitching will just reinforce the seam and help stop the bag from showing any strain when it's turned out. Now we're ready to attach the back panel. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to clip the top edges to match and the center first of all and just watch out for this flap that it's not getting in your way. Same as I did on the other side, I'm going to snip into this gusset so that I can spread it and get a better fit. So these snips, depending on the fabric you're using, could be closer or further apart. So this cork is quite flexible, so my snips are about an inch apart, but you can go down as little as half an inch if your fabric is a little bit less forgiving. Now I'm going to sew this with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and then again I'm going to do a second row of stitching within the seam. Now just be really careful, you're not going to be sewing through the flap, so you may need to just kind of pull it out of the way when you're sewing these top corners. When sewing curves, it could be really helpful to use an awl or a flathead screwdriver to hold the fabric in place. If you do choose to use an awl or a screwdriver, be careful to keep it well away from your needle when sewing. Now I've got both sides attached. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press the seam open at the top and I'm just going to baste that with an eighth of an inch seam allowance to keep that nice and flat. I'm going to do it with all four seams at the top. This will help with your top stitching later. It will make sure that everything stays completely flat. This is slightly easier to do with the flap tucked into the bag. Okay, so that is your exterior done. Set that aside now and we'll move on to the next step. Step six is the lining pocket. For this step, you're going to need your remaining zip, your zip pocket facing, your two interior zip pocket pieces, and one of your line, lining main panels. So the first thing I've done is I've marked this zip pocket facing with the measurements shown on the pattern. Again, it's three quarters of an inch in from each edge to create a rectangle. If you're in any doubt, just look at the pattern and it will show you the diagram in more detail. What we're also going to do is mark this. So we're marking it one and a quarter inches down from the tips here. So one and a quarter inches down, I've marked a line and I've marked the center. Then what I'm going to do is place this zip pocket facing 
on the line, match up the center marks and pin it in place. And I'm gonna sew this rectangle. When I get to the corners here, I'm gonna use a shorter stitch length for a neater finish. Okay, so we're doing the same thing as we did for the flat pocket. We're going to cut that center line and then we're going to cut all the way down toward these triangles at the end and cut out towards the corners. You want to get as close as you can to those corners, but you do not want to cut your stitching. You may find this easier with a craft knife. I'm going to take this over to the iron. I'm going to press it from all four sides and then I'm going to push it through to the back and press it from the back as well. Now that's pressed, I'm just going to set that aside for a moment and grab the zip pocket pieces. So I'm going to have this one right side up and I'm going to place the zip right side up on the top edge and then clip them together. I'm going to sew that with a scant quarter inch seam allowance. Now I'm going to grab my second zip pocket piece and place that right side up. I'm going to take the other side of the zip and place it right side up on top. Just check that your zip pocket pieces line up down the edges and then clip the zip to that top edge. I'm going to sew that edge with a scant quarter inch seam allowance. Before I fit the zip pull, I'm just going to take this over to the iron and I'm going to give it a press with the iron to get it to lay nice and flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of Fabri-Tac glue to help this stay in place while we're sewing it. So I'm going to just put it within the seam allowance here, just along the edge of the zip. Then I'm going to take my lining panel and I want this pocket facing on the back, this bit here, to line up with the edge of the zip. That way you know it's centered. Okay, get that centered nicely over the zip tape. and I'll just give that glue a moment to dry. Now I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew a rectangle around here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. When I'm doing that, I'm going to make sure that the pockets are completely open so that otherwise, if this one is folded down, you'll sew your pocket closed. Now we're going to turn this panel over and one of these pieces is longer than the other. So we're going to fold the shorter edge up by half an inch and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the longer piece up so that it matches. So I'm just going to take mine over to the iron and give it a press so that it stays in place. Once both sides are folded up to match, we're just going to clip the pocket together. And we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and just sew the sides. We're not sewing the bottom because we're going to turn the bag out through there. So just pull the main panel away as you do this and sew through it with a quarter inch seam allowance, making sure to backstitch well at the bottom. Step seven is lining construction. For this step, you're gonna have your two main lining panels and your lining gusset. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna mark the gusset. So we're marking it on the wrong side of the fabric and we're gonna mark it one and a half inches down. Now you're gonna grab one of your lining main panels and you're gonna match the top edge of the gusset to the top corner of the panel and just clip it together. Do the same on the other side. And then you want to match your bottom center marks together as well. As we did with the exterior, we're gonna to need to clip, snip into the edges of the gusset to make it fit. And for part of this, we're gonna be using a bigger seam allowance. So you can let your snips go a little bit bigger further down here, deep into the curve. So quarter inch snips here is absolutely fine. Now I'm gonna ease the rest of the gusset in place so you can see how kind of, where I've snipped, it kind of stretches. That's what we're doing here with these snips. So I'm just gonna clip the rest of the gusset into place. 
Now when we're sewing this, what we're going to do is we're going to use a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance at the top. This makes sure that the lining will fit correctly into the exterior. But once we meet this one and a half inch line, we're going to increase the seam allowance gradually. So we're doing the rest of it with a half inch seam allowance and then coming back to a 3 8 of an inch at the top. Now I'm going to repeat the whole process to attach the remaining lining panel. So I will start by matching the top edges and the center mark. Now I'm going to sew this again with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance on this top section and increasing to a half inch seam allowance along the bottom. This larger seam allowance will make the lining smaller and make it fit better into the bag. As you're sewing this panel on, you shouldn't be sewing through the zip pocket, but be careful because you are getting close to it. Okay, so now that's sewn, I'm gonna take my pinking shears to these curves. Now, I'm not gonna do the top because I don't wanna mess up the seam allowance up there. I'm just gonna do from the line that I drew on the gusset downward. So we're just gonna reduce the size of these seams, but we're also just gonna help this curve sit a little bit neater. And you can do the same thing on your exterior as well. But bear in mind that you don't wanna do the very top because we wanna match those up nice and neat. Same as the exterior, we're gonna press these seams open up here and then just baste them open so that they'll stay completely flat for when we're sewing the bag together later. Step eight is final assembly. For this step, you're gonna need everything that you've got left. So the exterior, the lining, your grab handle and main strap, a strap slider, rivets, and one rectangle ring. And if you haven't fitted your strap ends yet, you may have some strap ends too. So the exterior should still be wrong sides out. And you're gonna want the flap completely pushed in so that it's gonna be out of the way. The lining now needs to be right sides out. So you're gonna turn that right sides out. And you want your zip pocket to be open so we can turn it out easily later. We're gonna put this inside the exterior and we want the zip pocket on the lining to be up against the flap. We're gonna start by matching the seams. So I would recommend just tucking your O-rings down so they're not gonna make things more difficult. And you wanna match your lining and exterior seams together. Do that on both sides. Now we're gonna clip the rest of the top edge together. And if you've got your center marks there, which you should, you can match those together just to make sure it's perfect. We're gonna sew all the way around this top edge with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. For this step, I do find it useful to use an awl to kind of hold the fabric in place because it's gonna to want to slip and slide a bit. Also worth mentioning, if you are using a flatbed machine like mine, it's much easier to sew this from the inside like so. Whereas if you're on a domestic machine, you might be able to fit the arm of your machine through here and then you can sew from the outside. Once you've sewn that first row of stitching, I recommend sewing another row just behind it within the seam allowance, just to reinforce that seam. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the bag right side out through the zip pocket. Now this is a bit of a tight squeeze, so just take your time with it. If you're using like a 
thick vinyl or stiff vinyl. Sometimes if you warm the fabric up a bit with um, a hairdryer or something, that can help with getting it to turn out. But mostly I'd just say, take your time. Um, generally pushing is better than pulling. And there you go. So what we want to do is we want to push the seams out on the exterior first. Kind of get your finger in there, get a nice neat finish on the seam, get it nice and round. And I'll just get rid of that loose thread there. Okay, so next what we want to do is push the lining into the exterior. And we're going to want to spend a bit of time getting this edge nice and neat. So we don't want the lining showing. What you want to do is kind of push that seam up. You just reach in through the pocket, push the seam. This is more like what we want, a nice crisp finish. Now, depending on the fabrics you're using, you may want to press this with an iron. I'm not going to because I've had the occasional disaster with cork on the iron, so I'm just not going to risk it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put clips around to hold that seam where I want it. You can also kind of roll it between your fingers, that sometimes helps. I'm going to do this around the whole of the top edge of the bag. Pay particular attention to these seams here. Because we basted them flat, they should stay nice and flat. But just make sure that they're looking nice and neat. To make this step a little bit easier, just make sure that your lining is pushed in as far as it can go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to top stitch the bag. Make sure your O-rings are folded down and the flap is folded down. We do not want to top stitch through that flap as we're doing this. Again, if you're on a flatbed machine, you may prefer to do it from the inside. Alternatively, you could put your machine up on blocks and then you can turn it into a free arm machine. Whatever method you prefer. Now let's top stitch. There is one optional extra you can do. Now you want to make sure that your lining is sat really, really neat. So you can like push in so that these corners, the lining and the exterior are matching. Okay, so that it's quite neat on the inside. And then what I like to do, this is entirely optional and also bear in mind what fabrics you're using because you don't want this to stain. So try it on an off cut first. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this between the lining and the exterior so that the gussets are stuck together. And what it should do is make the lining gusset just stay neatly in place. But if you've got a fabric that, you know, really absorbs the glue, then it might end up showing on the inside of your lining. So definitely check before you do this. Okay, so the last bit we're going to do, you just want to make sure that you don't, if you have glued it, you don't pull it, the lining back out when you do this. We're going to pull this zip pocket out and we're going to clip these folded edges together. And I'm just going to sew that pocket closed with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so push that pocket back in now it's sewn. And I'm just going to zip that closed. Again, just going to make sure that everything is sitting nice and flush on the inside there. Okay, so we are going to put the bag right side up like that. And what you want to do first of all is start with your grab handle. So you're going to have your grab handle with your rectangle ring on. And what you want to do is from right to left, put the end without the rectangle ring through here. Okay, so your rectangle rings over here. 
what we're going to do is we're going to line up these two holes with the two holes that you have on here. There we go. So they should line up and you can fit rivets through there. Now, I don't recommend setting any of your rivets until the whole thing's done, just to make sure that everything's on the right side, going in the right direction. So your strap end should be here on the outside of the bag like this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the other end through the next O-ring and bring it around. And you want to find your furthest rivet holes. So there's two there. And we're going to put a rivet through matching it up with these two holes. So now grab your second rectangle ring and you're going to pop the end through there and fold it down and again line up the rivet holes that you've got so you should have two sets there and clip those in place. So just have a quick look at your grab handle. It should be like this strap ends pointing out on both sides. Just make sure that's correct before you go ahead and set those rivets. Now you're going to grab your main strap. And what we want to do is put one end through the strap slider. Now, if you didn't fit your strap ends earlier, you're going to want to fit one on this end now. What we're going to do is fit rivets through the holes that we made. So again, we're going to be lining up, matching up those holes. And go ahead and set those. Okay, so your bag again is going to be right side up with the front up. And you're going to take the end that doesn't have the strap slider and you're going to feed it through this rectangle ring and we're going from left to right and we're going to go up and over this center bar and this is where you may have wish that you fit your strap ends at the end because it's going to be a really tight squeeze for mine. Or you may just have to take yours off. So there we go. I've taken mine off. I will refit that in a minute. Now I'm going to get this end. We're going to go up and over that center bar. Okay, so pull that so that it's quite short and you can check that it's not twisted. And then for the other side of the strap, we're going to come from the right to the left through the rectangle ring. And again, you're going to go ahead and line up those rivet holes. So you want to make sure that your strap ends are going to be showing on the same side. So as you can see here, once I've refitted this one, they're going to be showing on the same side like this. I'm going to set those rivets. I'm going to fit my strap end and then we're done. One last thing you can do to really get it looking good is um, give it a good press. So if you want, you can stuff like tea towels inside it and then you can press it with the iron. That can make it easier to press just to get out any last creases. And there we have the finished bag. I'm pretty chuffed with how that came out. I think oh, it just looks such a nice contrast with the dark navy floral against that light colored cork. I am really, really happy with the finished bag there. And I'll just show you a quick peek at the inside. There you go. So thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial. Um, I'll just give you a quick sneak peek of what we've got coming up next on Country Gal Designs. So for those of you that like to work with leather, you might know that we have our no-sew patterns that Adam designs. This is our next pattern. This is the no-sew clutch. As you can tell by the name, there's no sewing involved. It's entirely assembled by rivets. So this is Adam's little clutch design to go with his tote and crossbody design that are already available. It's pretty cool. It's pretty neat. It looks pretty posh. It's a nice little size. It's great. Like if you're going out in the evening, you can fit your phone and your keys and things in it. It's gorgeous. Okay. So that's our no sew clutch pattern coming out soon. 
If you're not really into leather, then don't worry. We've got something else for you. Here we go. We've also got this backpack design planned for the, oh, probably the beginning of 2024. So it's still in prototyping. We're still working out exactly all the details that we want for this. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a little look at this. This is called the Two-Faced Backpack. It's able to be worn both ways. So the straps go back and forward. So if you wanna wear it securely, you can have the main closure against your back. Or if you wanna wear it like a standard backpack, then you can do. It's also got these really cool pockets on the side. These are expandable stretchy mesh pockets. So there you go, we're just working out all the details, making a couple of prototypes, deciding on the final perfect stabilizer, that kind of thing. So this will probably be out, yeah, beginning of 2024. So thank you so much for joining me today and I uh, hope that we'll get to see you soon. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button and make sure that you get notified when we release our next video tutorials. See you soon.